Claudine Kruta. I'm a senior conservation scientist here at the Tosh Ecological Institute. I'm from Kietmanswop in the south. I have a background in, in science and environmental biology, but also microbiology. That's what I studied. I studied anthrax here in the park. Um, my first job was with the ministry as a conservation scientist, and I only got into this position. When I was an, in undergrad, right, um, I never saw myself being here. No. I, I thought I'd be, I don't know, working for some NGO in an office and just doing field visits or whatnot. But then I got the opportunity to do my master's on anthrax and I was based here in Okakoyo. And this place got under my skin. Um, so much so that I'm still here how many years later. It's tough. It really is tough. It's a very male dominated field. Um, in like the management structure of the park I'm the only scientist, there's only one other female, I'm not the only female scientist and there's only one other female warden and then there's a female accountant. So we're only three in basically the top management of the, of the park. That really comes with some challenges because sometimes you feel like, do you really belong? Do your opinions matter? Because if you say something, you'll be looked at as, oh, you're just a woman. Um, being able to do certain things, off-road driving, um, going on captures, late nights, and so on. It's hard being away from family, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that I would be here being unhappy. No. Look at this place. I'm. I'm I'm very blessed and grateful for where I am, for how far I've come. Achieved so many things, overcame so many obstacles to be where I am. And I would say to any girl child out there who want to pursue a career in science, in any STEM um, career, go for it. The world is your oyster. I mean, because it's such a male-dominated field, you going in there as a woman, I've got very bright pink nails now um, and I'm in nature, nature conservation. You don't really see that, right? But I think we, there, is a, there is a role for us to play. We do bring a certain, certain something specific that, that men don't understand and as a woman, own it. Be a girl still, but also know that you've got the knowledge, you've, you've got the skills, believe in yourself and you will achieve. So the Itosha Ecological Institute was established in 1974 and basically its role was to assist management um, by providing scientific information. Previously the management of the park was very um, ad hoc and not really based on scientific evidence but with the establishment of the, the institute with a few ecologists and a veterinarian um, more adaptive management took place. We are overseeing all monitoring and research scientific activities in the park. Monitoring activities that we do is the rhino population, monitoring mortalities in the park, elephant population, so all wildlife species. We're monitoring the numbers of that. The blue cranes, flamingos during the wet season, where they are, are they breeding. We've got special trees, the Moringa forest, um, just outside of Kukuya here, we're also monitoring that. So basically all ecological monitoring that falls on us. Research, um, anthrax being one of the most long-lived research project in the park since the 1980s. It's been studied intensively, but the focus of it has changed over the years and we've had lots of collaborative work with specifically anthrax with different universities. Currently the university working on it is the University of, of Wisconsin-Madison where we have um, 
two Namibian students currently on the project. One is doing a PhD in the US and the other one just finished her master's with the University of Namibia. And then there are several foreign students attached to that project. We've established a, a project the greater, in the Greater Itosha landscape, so 40 to 50 kilometers boundary around Itosha, to look at um, carnivores. So it's um, called the Greater Itosha Carnivore Project, where it's a collaboration between us, um, Ongava Research Center just outside the gate here, UNAM, and then we're looking at different components. We've got a um, postdoctoral student or researcher who's coming in later this month. He's from India, but he's, he's connected to the University of Colorado, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he's going to look at the human lion or human carnivore um, conflict situation, which is for us, it's a, it's a big concern, not only as Itosha, but I think the country at large. We've got different um, neighbors. In the north and to the west we've got our communal farmers, in the south um, and the east it's more commercial farmers and resettlement farms as well. And they each have varying conflict situations with, with carnivores, particularly lion and hyena. Hyena is not so much of a concern for the ministry because farmers, they, they tend to sort the issue out themselves but with lions in particular, because they can't really defend themselves against it. Um, we, we really want to, to work intensively on that. We try to mitigate, to mitigate the conflict situations. We've got the, the elephant project whereby we're looking at the behavior of elephants, the social interactions that's with the Professor Dr. Caitlin O'Connell. She's the focal person on that. We've also got plenty carnivores collared. Um, not so many elephants collared in the park anymore, but elsewhere. Um, several herbivores collared as well, so we're looking at the movement data of these animals. That I think covers the research and ecological science aspect of it. So we've got a wealth of knowledge here, a lot of stuff, paper-based still. Um, the knowledge that we generate by monitoring, getting the information in, that's on a database that is it's accessible to us currently, but anybody who is working on something, for instance rainfall data that we collect annually, as well as from the, so we've got seasonal rain gauges out in the park, or over 160 something rain gauges, but then we also collect from the stations that we have on a database. So if anybody's interested in the data, they can approach us, we give it out, um, depending on what they use it for, obviously. Um, but then we've, we've started with the process, especially now with the carnival project. We wanted to see what has been done on carnivores in Itosha and the surroundings since, you know, historic times. And these were all paper-based reports conducted or compiled internally by um, park managers, by scientists in the past. So we've now um, digitized that and that we've, we've given to the EIS um, and it should be up soon. I, I haven't checked recently but it should be up already. Um, so we're trying to make all the information that we have here that's on paper locked up in cabinets and so on. We're trying to make that easily available to the wider community. But obviously, if there are people out there who, who are interested in conducting research in the Itosha environment, um, we are open to, to emails and whatnot. And they can always request certain things if we are easily um, able to extract the information that they need. SMART stands for Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool. So it's basically an easier way of collecting data 
whether it's normal patrol data or whether you use it for, for surveys and so on. Um, in the past we used to have everything paper-based, but that was really tedious and too much work. Um, a lot of data, valuable, valuable data, had been collected, but it hasn't been analyzed at all. I don't know where those books are currently. But so in 2016, um, SMART was first piloted in Itosha, um, just in Okokoyo, and in the Konene with SRT. Just to see whether it, it will work here, um, does it meet our needs and so on. Um, 2018-19 we rolled it out across the park and in 2019 we piloted it in Mudumu National Park. 2020 we rolled it out to the entire northeastern parks and last, no, this year um, it was established in Waterbury. So what SMART does is the database is entirely your own. You have it for your specific needs. You will say what you want to monitor, whether it's your priority species for us, of course, it's our lion, elephant, rhino. Um, you can record your mortalities, um, but the main thing is you'll be able to easily visualize where your teams went out, how much did they cover per month, per quarter, per year. It has an inbuilt reporting function, um, so no more do the rangers have to sit and write long reports and not actually know where they've been or what they've done. So because of that, it's at a click of a button, your report is generated with maps, with figures, with tables, everything that the, the managers need, that is then sent out um, going further. The idea is to have all national parks using the system and then having a, a unit at head office that can easily extract the information and generate this big report that monthly has to go to, to the director and then further up. So it really is to simplify the, the ranger's work, the people actually collecting the data, simplifying the, the warden's work, compiling these reports um, at the stations and then further up. SMART is not only for Namibia or specific to Namibia, currently I think almost 1,000 sites worldwide, um, of which about 17, 18 countries have, have a national mandate for it. Namibia is one of those countries that has a national mandate for SMART because it's written in our, our guidelines for monitoring in protected areas. So it's really an, an incredibly powerful tool. It's free of charge. Training and support is also free. It's for the next, I think, 30 or so, 30 to 50 years, I think, it's going to be free. It's um, nine NGOs that have really dedicated themselves for this to work, helping improve conservation and management of protected areas. The initial setup of the database and all of that, that's a bit technical, so you really need intense training. But for rangers collecting data, I think we've spent in the northeastern parks maybe three to four days with rangers actively going on patrols and showing them how to collect the data. I think one of the oldest people that I've trained was 58 from Mangeti, 58 or 59, and he caught on to it. He said he doesn't speak English, it's only Afrikaans or Rukwangali, um, but this was in English and he got it. It really is user-friendly. There's now a new, newer version of it, um, Smart Mobile, that has icons, and I think even for illiterate people, entering the data just by pressing, that's a picture of an elephant, yes, I'm seeing five of them, um, it's, it's very easy. For the database part of it, you really need somebody who is um, computer literate, um, but the, the training there is also not, you don't need to be um, a rocket scientist to be able to run the database. We actually have an assistant ranger in Mudumu who's running smart, um, not the warden, not the ranger, an assistant ranger who's who's using it and for the system to work as a whole you really need champions so in each park we have got a, a person who's really spearheading it and driving it just so that everybody feels motivated and you've got that person behind you asking did you take your device I need to download where are the 
the reports, I want feedback. Because if you don't have that, then the system will fail.